Hello, this is a brief presentation on degrees in experimental physics and physics with astrophysics in Maynooth University. My name is Creo Sullivan and I work in the Department of Experimental Physics. In this presentation, I'll be talking about the option of specialising experimental physics if you take the MH201 degree in your CAO option form. Also, the option of studying experimental physics with another science subject as part of MH201 and the degree in physics with astrophysics, which is MH204. So first of all, I'll say a little bit about physics uh, and astrophysics, and uh, I'll say something about the kind of careers you might expect to get with these degrees. So if I try to say what physics is, very difficult to, to summarize, but in physics, we try to understand nature and concepts in nature, such as matter, energy, forces, and so on. In experimental physics, we do like the physics you do in school, it's the same subject. We study theories, but we always bear in mind that we should test them in the laboratory or, or they should be testable in the laboratory. And that's why we use the word experimental. But it, it's physics, it's not just the experiments of physics. A few points. Students who take MH201, the science degree, can choose to specialize in experimental physics. So you come out with an honors degree in experimental physics. So it is a specialized degree. You could also choose to end up with 50-50 experimental physics and another science subject. So that might be of interest to people who maybe want to go into um, medical physics, say, and do experimental physics and biology, a combination which isn't available many places. We're often asked whether you have to have done physics in school. Uh, the answer is no. We start off assuming you haven't done physics and we'll start from, from the bottom and work up. You also don't have to have studied honors mathematics. Everybody in science will have to do mathematics in, in first year. And of course, if you don't like mathematics, you would have to question your decision to do physics. Mathematics is, is a tool, the language uh, of physics, but you don't have to have studied honours mathematics in school. If you choose MH204, uh, you will choose from the outset that you will specialise in physics with astrophysics. If you choose MH201, you don't have to make the decision about what you will specialise in. Um, until you, you get later on in your degree, but they're both specialised degrees. So just some of the topics that you might expect to study in experimental physics. Uh, some of them you'll recognise maybe if you've done science or physics in school and, and some you won't have studied in school. We do things like uh, the theory of really small things, quantum mechanics, so the universe gets really weird on the small scale. Also on the large scale, relativity, where space and time become meshed together. Um, we will study things like solid state physics, particle physics, electromagnetism, mechanics, geophysics, nuclear physics, electronics. We can also apply it to things like climate change or environmental physics. So you see that there's a whole range of topics that you'll study if you decide to take a physics degree. And it really opens your mind to how the universe works, not just on the everyday scale, which our intuition is built up on, but also where really weird things happen on the large scale in the universe and also on the, the, the small scale. Our degrees are accredited by the Institute of Physics, which is the professional body of physics in the UK and Ireland. As well as studying those topics in, in, in lectures, uh, we have uh, experimental work and student projects. So as you become more specialised, when you get into the later years, you'll have the opportunity to work with staff members and maybe work in their research groups and carry out projects. So all our students have the option of, of carrying out a project in, in their final year. And we also organise field trips uh, for students uh, during their degree. So you can get an idea of how physics is applied in, in the workplace. If you're interested in astrophysics, then we have the degree called physics with astrophysics. It's quite similar to a physics degree, an experimental physics degree. It has about one third specialist topics in astrophysics and about two thirds standard physics. So an astrophysicist is a physicist. Um, in particular, an astrophysicist will try and understand objects in the universe, but also the dynamics of the universe uh, itself. And to do that, we have to develop relevant technology. So a lot of the instrumentation that we use to make observations of the universe and to try and understand it aren't available off the shelf. We design and build scientific instruments, and we also have to learn how to make observations. 
And again, an astrophysics degree is accredited by the Institute of Physics, so everybody will do enough core physics to be a physicist. And the whole range of careers available to physicists would also be available to you should you take the physics with astrophysics uh, degree option. So just because it may be more uh, unfamiliar to you, just so some of the idea of the things that you will study if you decide to, to choose astrophysics. We study nearby objects maybe like the planets in our solar system, nice picture of, of Saturn there in the center towards the top. But of course, nowadays, we not only have our own solar system to study, but we also have planets forming around other stars. We can see now dusty disks around young stars, like the picture in the top left. Uh, we want to understand that, how planets form. And of course, now we have a lot more planets to test our theories on. We want to understand stars like our sun here in the bottom left. Um, not only uh, how they live, but how they're born from large gas clouds. So some pictures of gas and dust there, the Orion Nebula, you might recognize the, the, the pink colored nebula there in the center. We want to understand how the sun or stars like the sun generate uh, energy. That's very important because of its impact on Earth and also on things like, like climate change and so on. But also what will happen when the star runs out of fuel. A star is like a, a nuclear reactor. It generates energy throughout its lifetime, but it will eventually run out and it, it will die. And towards the bottom left of this, bottom right of the slide there, you'll see uh, what happens to stars when they die. Uh, they could become a planetary nebula or maybe go supernova like the crab nebula in the, the bottom right. We want to understand all these things. Stars are, are not scattered uniformly around the universe, but uh, into gravitationally bound objects called galaxies, like the Andromeda galaxy there in the, in the top left. We want to understand that. We want to understand galaxies. Um, as soon as we look at the sky with anything other than our eyes through an optical telescope or CCD, um, we see different objects. On the, the top right is what's called a radio galaxy, and you see the red is actually an image of uh, fast-moving electron particles in magnetic fields. The blue is what we see optically. So as astronomers, we not only look at visible light, but we also look at radio waves, X-rays, gamma rays, and, and so on. And we see different pictures of the universe when, when we do that. On the bottom left is a, a radio galaxy. You see, it looks nothing like the Andromeda galaxy on the top left. We also take images of the very early universe. In the center there is a picture of what's called the cosmic microwave background, hot spots and cold spots in the universe before stars or galaxies formed. So we can look back in time by looking further and further uh, away. We also learn how to build uh, telescopes and design instruments to look at the universe at all these different wavelengths. So an image there in the bottom right of, of telescopes on, on the South Pole. In Minute, the research groups have, have worked on instruments such as that. For the astrophysicists, then, we also arrange uh, field trips. Uh, we've gone to the European Space Agency Technology Centre in uh, Holland. Uh, Jodrell Bank in the UK. We take our final year students to a professional observing site in Oak Provence in, in, in France, where they can take data for their, their projects. And the web address in the centre there is a nice uh, short movie that one of our students made about the uh, field trip uh, for his observing project. And you might like to take a look at that to give a flavour of uh, what you might uh, end up doing in your final year if you choose physics or astrophysics. On the bottom left, we show just some of the telescopes we have in the department uh, ourselves. These are some possible careers for people with a degree in physics. And I took these from the Institute of Physics publication called A Day in a Life, where Irish physicists just described a day, a typical day for them in their job. But I think the titles just give you an idea of the array of jobs, the types of jobs and um, the wide variety of jobs that you can get with a, a physics degree. And I would encourage anyone who is interested to have a look at the Institute of Physics, the IOP, their website, where they give information about possible career paths and what you can do with a physics degree. The structure of the degree you'll find in, in, in other booklets, but they're both based on the sort of 4321 structure. So if you choose MH201 and are interested in, in physics, you take experimental physics as one of your subjects in first year, you'll have to take maths, and then you will choose two other subjects from biology, chemistry, computer science, engineering, theoretical physics, mathematics, or, or, or data science. You could also choose now critical skills options. 
And then as you go on in your career, you will uh, go on your degree, you will drop a subject each year and end up specialising in experimental physics. Or, of course, you could keep your two third year subjects uh, in fourth year. So that's the basic structure and be very similar for the physics or astrophysics option, uh, where you'll take three other subjects in first year, then two, then one. And finally, only the physics and astrophysics in your final year. We have a very similar structure for our physics with astrophysics degree, except that in second year, physics with astrophysics takes up about a subject and a half. But other than that, it's a very similar structure where you take a choice of subject, a range of subjects in first year, and then you narrow down that choice as you go on, and you will end up specialising in physics with astrophysics in your final year. So if you think you'd be interested in, in experimental physics or physics with astrophysics, we would be very happy to talk to you and answer any questions you have. You will find our contact details on the Maynooth University website for the Department of Experimental Physics. You see a list of staff there and contact the department and we'll be very happy to answer any questions you have on, on the degree or possible careers. Thank you.